You do? during rehearsal, right? Screen. The screen. I didn't do anything except turn it on and turn it off. Amen, amen, and amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. If you're logged in online this morning, good morning to you as well. The psalmist says, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. And then someone echoes in and says, his love endures forever. The psalmist says, give thanks to the God of God. Someone echoes, his love endures forever. The psalmist says, give thanks. Lord of Lord, and someone else says, forever. If you have come today, if you're gathered here in the sanctuary, or whether you've joined us online for worship, we have come to give thanks and to worship our Lord. Today is National Back to Church Sunday, and I just have an assignment for you to do. If you left someone at home this morning, I want you to take out your phone and see a text to tell them to wake up and to log in online to worship with us this morning. Since it's national back to church, doing uh, uh, d new things in, in this season, uh, it, it's not too late for you to send a message out. And if you're uh, worshiping with us online, other room, and they're, they're playing sleep this morning, waiting on you to finish breakfast, why don't you just go in the room, tap them on the shoulder, and have them to come into your personal sanctuary with you and to worship with you on this morning because we, are, we have gathered to worship our Lord and our King. I'm going to ask if you are able, if you would stand and please join us in, with, along with us in our centering song. Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel that empty feeling? Your shame's done all it's stealing, and you're desperate for some healing. Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way. 
hallelujah. I wanted to keep going. I don't know about you, but <laughs> that, that felt good this morning. Yes, yeah, since I am your worship leader this morning, I get a chance to allow my personality to come out more this morning. And so if you would join along with us for our call to worship. My shepherd is the Lord. Nothing in these The good shepherd comes. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. As I walk this street, I know questions come and questions go. we can have hope because God promises not to let go. Our scripture lesson this morning is coming from Exodus as well as John. I'll start by reading Exodus chapter uh, 13. I'm going to start at verse 11 because I don't want to start in the middle of the thought uh, because it just pulls everything together. Exodus chapter 13 beginning at verse 11 and I'm reading from the NIV translation of God of the word. After the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites and give it to you, as he promised on oath to you and your ancestors, you are to give over to the Lord the first offsprings of every womb. All the firstborn males of your livestock belong to the Lord. 
Redeem with a lamb every firstborn donkey, but if you do not redeem it, break its neck. Redeem every firstborn among your sons. In the days to come, when your sons ask you, what does this mean? Say to them, with a mighty hand, with a mighty hand, the Lord brought us out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. When, the, when Pharaoh stubbornly refused to let us go, the Lord killed the firstborn of both the people and animals in Egypt. This is why I sacrifice to the Lord for the, fir the first male offspring of every womb and redeem each of my firstborn sons. And it will be like a sign on your hand and a symbol on your forehead that the Lord brought us up out of Egypt with his mighty hand. Now we're going to switch over to John chapter 10, verse 11, and it reads, and it's in red, so we believe that this is Jesus speaking when we see red in the Bible, right? It says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is, the, is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he or she abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man or woman runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep, I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there should be one flock and one shepherd. Oh, I'll read that again. There should be one flock and one shepherd. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Hallelujah. Let us join together in our unison prayer. O oh God, the Holy Spirit, come to us and among us. Come as fresh wind and cleanse us. Come like fire to burn those things from us that are not like you. Convict and consecrate our hearts and lives for your glory. This we ask for Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but that, that song, Walk by Faith, should be a testimony and, and it should be a declaration of every believer and every blood washed and redeemed believer. Because that will, that's exactly what we say that we are doing. We are walking by faith, trusting God along these broken roads to prepare us. And so at this time, we call this our Touch by God uh, moment during our worship experience. And one of the things I would just ask for us to do as we share our Touch by God moment is I would ask you to be mindful of time. Uh, if you're logged in online, you can share your Touch by God moment in the chat. Uh, and so at this time, if there's someone who would like to share one Touch by God experience this week, please feel free to stand. Amen. We Amen. Thank you. We're giving God praises. We can give God praise for a very good report from the doctor's office this week. Amen. Are there any other Touch by God moments? I just want to thank those who showed up and helped the Sunday school meeting upstairs yesterday and every day this week from cleaning to taking care of the children's locker room to putting them in the bathroom. I just want to say thank you. I love everybody that helped. Amen. We're giving another praise and thanksgiving for all of those who had a heart of service to come out to uh, work in the uh, Sunday school wing of the building. So thank you so much. And we give God praise for your time and for your service. Are there any other Touched by God moments this week? All right. So being that there are no other Touched by God moments this week, we're going to move to our young people's time. And so I'm gonna call for the young people to come forward. And I'm going to be responsible and put my mask on because one of the things we know is that our young people are not vaccinated and we want to remember that we're still in a pandemic. Amen. And we want to keep them safe. We're going to ask that you stand here. So today we won't be sitting. How are you doing? Tell me your name. My name is Suzette. 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 Okay, Suzette. We have David and Ian. So David, you're going to come with me. You're going to stand here. Suzette and Ann, you're going to stand over here. You stand right there. Stand right here so everyone can see your beautiful faces. All right. And so you stand with me, David. We've been talking about faith. And so one of the things that we just finished a song that's, uh, that talked about walking by faith. And David volunteered. Uh, he, he didn't resist when I asked him to be... Uh, that to uh, do this activity with me. And I, I asked him first, uh, do you have a problem being blindfolded? And he said, no. And so right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask you to stand beside me. And there are some instructions that you're going to get. Our other friends are going to be trying to distract you, but I want you to keep your, your ears open to only my voice. And so what I say, that's what I want you to do. So don't uh, try to put them out your mind Try to act like they don't exist, okay? For the adults that are watching, this is the example of faith. This is what God has called us to do when we, when we are called to follow God. We are called to put on our proverbial blindfolds. Sit down here. Okay, I'm going to turn my mic off for a minute because... Instructions. You have no idea what I told them, but you have your instructions too, right? 
What, what are your instructions? I call Adrian. Keep your, keep your ears open and your heart open for my voice. Because we just read the scripture that my sheep know my voice, right? Did, did you hear me read that? Oh, okay. I was just all you women. Did I just dream that I did that? Okay. All right. So we're all here. All right. So David, your first assignment is to walk forward. Take small steps because the area is not that big. Keep going. You have to trust me. That's the thing about faith. You have to trust that I will not let you get hurt. You have to trust that I will not let you bump into anything. Go. You have to trust. David, keep going. You have to trust that I'm not going to let anything happen to you. This is what faith is about. This is the voice of God speaking to David saying, go. And you hear the other distractions. I don't hear you, Ann. What are you saying? D uh, David, go left. Go left. Left. Your other left. Your other left. <laughs> now keep going straight. Go straight. Okay, stop. I don't hear, I don't hear my distractions. What are you supposed to be saying? Uh, walk, David. Keep going forward. Walk, walk, David. Walk, David. Walk, David. Walk, David. Keep going, David. Keep going, David. Turn around, David. Come back. Turn around, David. Stop, David. Turn. 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 I don't hear the distractions. Come forward, David. Come forward, David. Come forward, David. Come forward, David. Pause. Pause. The reason why I brought him here is because I want us to get a visual of what happens in our lives when we encounter what I like to call roadblocks. Because we're, even though we walk by faith, we're going to have opportunities and we're going to have things that show up in our life where we're going to be almost at the point of going over. But because David knows my voice and because I've promised, I'm pretending that I'm God right now, because I've promised that I'm going to walk with him, when David gets to this point that may harm him, as what God does for us is that God comes and walks with us. And so, David, you keep walking forward because now I'm walking with you. I promise that I will never leave you nor forsake you. And so as long as your hand is in mine, that I can navigate you around all of the distractions and all of the things that may harm you because that's what I promised that I would do because I'm God. That's what I wanted to show you. Thank you, Debbie. You can take this off. That's what I wanted to teach this morning. I wanted to teach that we will have opportunities where we will get so close to being harmed. And God promised that I will come walk with you, even through the valley of the shadow of death. And David just demonstrated, thank you for being my distractions this morning. I appreciated that. But David kept his eyes and his ear, his ears on me. And even though people were saying, come here, come here, David continued to follow my voice. That's what God is calling us to do in this season, to continue to follow God's voice. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now it is time for our announcements. We, I was about to say I don't see the announcement. I thought it was just me that I just overlooked them. But, and so uh, they're not here this morning. And so that's okay because I remember some of them off the top of my head. This is God doing teaching right now even in this moment because we've had conversations about how we're going to do this. And so God is just reminding us again as I just talked about trust, that we trust God that we can still get through this. And so one of the things that I would like to just say, uh, Dawn already shared her thanks is, thank you, thank you, thank you so much to those who showed up yesterday uh, to help prepare the wing for our young people. Uh, as a pastor who has a heart now as for intergenerational ministry, I also have a heart for young people. And I wanna make sure that they are becoming the disciples that Christ has called them to be. And so we're doing some different things to get their area ready so that they have a space that they can call home just as we do as adults. So thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you who showed up. I wasn't able to join you on yesterday because I had a memorial service, but other than that, I would have been here with you. But thank you again from the bottom of my heart for your time and your service for our young people. The other announcement that I want to bring to your attention is out on the uh, table in the annex, 
there is a sign-up sheet. I'm looking for all teenagers, and if there are any teenagers that are, are part of this ministry between the ages of 13 and 18, please put their contact information on the sheet outside in the annex because I'm going to be reaching out to them so that we can start doing ministry. And so for the uh, adult volunteers that were, I also need you as well. And so please, please, please reach out to me so that we can begin to do some things with our youth. The other thing that I wanted to remind you of that was on the announcements for this week, uh, please remember to sign in each Sunday so that we can uh, continue to track who's attending worship. And so what we're trying to do is make sure that we're capturing attendance and then also who's here. And so please, please, please uh, sign in. One of the things that we're going to be doing is reaching out to disciples that we have not heard from or seen since we've gone into this phase of the pandemic. And so we would like to know who's here and who's not. And so we'll be reaching out uh, to others. And so um, I ask at this time that you would just, uh, the announcements didn't change that much from last week. And so uh, I don't believe there's anything that I'm missing, but if I did, I promise you, you will get an email or something from the church to let us know, to let you know if I missed anything. Um, let's see, crap walk. We had an announcement uh, last week uh, from Ms. Donna and uh, regarding the, uh, uh, the importance of the uh, crop walk. Uh, I volunteered to lead uh, a group. There will be two. Uh, it's going to be on, on Thursday of that week of October the 17th. And so there's going to be a morning group for those who like to walk in the morning. And then there's going to be an afternoon group for those who are at work but still want to participate. And so um, you will get more information about that as we move closer to that. But if you have not contacted me about walking uh, during the week of October 17, please, please, please reach out to me because this is for a good cause. It's, it's to help those that are less fortunate than us. I'm just gonna say it than us. And so we wanna make sure that we are walking by faith and trusting God with everything that we do. And so um, I, I think, I, Clara, did I miss something? Okay, come forward, with Claire. One of my goals is to make sure that we're creating a space for our youth and young adults to be leaders in this ministry. And so we're looking for opportunities to make sure we utilize those gifts. And so I'm gonna ask Claire to share her announcement. I have the sign up papers and uh, sheets, so come to me if you wanna do it, and I will hand you all of the information that you need for it. So let's give Clara a hand. I know you know Clara. I love when young people are involved in taking leadership in ministry because that's what God calls us to do, train them up so that as we are in our senior years, we can watch the fruit of our labor. And so uh, that, that is my goal to continue to create a harvest so that we have leaders in this place uh, that can continue to do ministry uh, in this place called Hamilton United Methodist Church. And so at this time, uh, we are going to prepare ourselves for our sharing of the peace. I'm gonna ask that you would take a couple of minutes to stand and wave to those that are in your area. Uh, please remember that we are still in a pandemic, so we are saying limited, limiting your personal interaction, but stand and, and say hi and wave at someone, or like I tell the teens, give a head nod. Good morning. Peace be, Peace be with you. Okay, I have to go.
may be seated at this time. At this portion in our worship experience, this is where we stand as intercessors and we ask God requests on behalf of others. And so at this time, I'm going to ask if you have any prayer requests this morning that you would mention the name of the individual that you would like lifted up in prayer on today. Sandy and David. That was prayer request for Sandy and David, and as well as Rosemary, and then also a praise report that David is home from the hospital. And also we're gonna lift up Bill. Are there any other prayer requests? What was that last name again? Master? See, now you understand what Mr. Dunn goes through. So now you see it's not just a Mr. Dunn thing. And so uh, it's, it's difficult to hear. And so that was a Mildred and a family who just had an uh, immediate death. Okay. Don? Bill? All right. Um, right here, Miss Judy? Okay, continued prayers for Bob, Kim, Betty Lou, and I missed the, and for Kathleen. All right, Ms. Pat. Uh, prayers for Mary Jane. Mary Jane. Mary Jane and Fallon. And Fallon. Right, Ms. Holly. Uh, Lucille. Lucille. And continued prayers for Happy. And continued prayers for Happy. Uh, in the back, prayers for Carl, prayers for Carl and, and Patty. All right, Mr. Larry. Barbara and, Bill. Barbara and Bill. Okay, I'm gonna make my way this way, so don't think I'm overlooking this side. All the way in the back, Miss Shirley. I heard Betty and Bruce. That was something. Someone in the middle. Okay, and so we're praying for Betty. She has some health concerns, and so we're lifting up Betty. And so have I, has everyone on this side uh, shared their prayer concern? There's one more. Maybe that's Ms. Roberta. Jimmy? Jimmy. Jimmy, okay. All right, on this side, all the way in the back. Maureen and Holly. Molly? Okay. All right. Yes. Sage. Okay, we're praying for our young people. Uh, one of the young people uh, attend here at Hamilton Sage, and uh, she was exposed to someone who uh, tested positive uh, for COVID, and so we want to make sure we continue to keep all of our youth lifted up who are doing in-person school during this season of uh, COVID. Are there any other prayer concerns on this side of the room? Gonna, right here. Say it again. Faye and, okay, right here in the white, Carrie, Karen, okay, okay, prayers for Karen, AJ, and a granddaughter with health concerns, okay, Logan, 
Okay. Are there any other prayer concerns on this side? Bert? Okay, we're going to lift up Bert in prayer. Are there any other prayer concerns? Thank you. And Michael. Okay. All right. Let us center ourselves. Let us pray. God of grace and mercy, only Lord. God, we've come to give you praise, to give you honor, and God, to lay our requests at your feet. God, we've come standing in the gap because we believe that you are a God who is more than able. God, we've come calling out the names of loved ones and, and friends and pleading on behalf of our children and youth. God, some came for health-related issues. God, some came with praise upon their lips. God, some came for a hedge of protection. God, some came because they know that you are a God who guides and directs in the midst of decision-making. And so, God, right now, in the name of Jesus, God, even if I can't call each and every name by heart, God, what's so great about you is that you are omniscient. God, what is so great about you is that you are sovereign, God, that you knew all of the names before they were even spoken. And so, God, right now, in my limitations, God, I ask that you would show up. God, I pray right now, God, for healing, God, for those that are home or in the hospitals that are seeking your power, God. We, we've come because, God, we believe that you are still the bomb in Gilead. And so, God, right now, in the name of Jesus, we just pray, have your way, O oh God. God, we've come right now because someone is having pain in their body. Someone is recovering from a procedure, God. Someone is waiting on test results. And so, God, right now, in Jesus' name, Show up, God, your will be done. God, we pray a hedge of protection around our children who are in school. Uh, God, we pray right now that you would cover them and protect them. God, we pray right now, God, that you will allow us to remember, God, that even though you are a God who can do anything but fail, you still call on us, God, to pay attention to logic and science. And so, God, we pray right now, God, that you would remind us, even in the midst of a pandemic, God, there are things that you are expecting us to do. So, God, we pray right now that you would give us the wisdom, God, when to walk by faith. We pray right now, God, that you would give us the wisdom, God, when to exercise authority in the midst of this pandemic. So, God, we pray right now, God, that you would move on each and every person that has gathered here in this sanctuary and that is worshiping with us online. 
God, you even know the prayer requests and the concerns that they didn't have the courage to, uh, to, to utter, God. And so we just pray right now that you would show up because you are the God who sees the crevices of our heart and know that there's a need. You are the God who knows the need before it is even spoken. And so right now in the name of Jesus, God, we call help. God, because we call you the helper, we call you the way maker. God, we believe that you are Jehovah Jireh, that you are still God, the provider. And so have your way, oh God. God, we're going to say thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you right now, God, for what you're going to do, God. Thank you right now, God, for even before the miracle shows up. Thank you right now, God, for even the, before the answer is even given. Have your way, God, for traveling mercies. Have your way, God. You are the GPS. You are the navigator, God. God, we pray for all of those that are traveling. God, allow them to be uh, arrive at their destination safely and to bring them back safely. God, protect us from danger seen and unseen. God, we give you all the praise. God, we give you all the glory. And God, as you taught your disciples, pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Power and the glory. Amen. What's going on with our mics today, but they're going in and out. And so I just pray that you would have some grace as we get our mics and our audio situated and before we sing i'm going to go ahead and introduce our, our our preacher for today because after we're done singing the next next voice you will hear will be that of our preacher you you know him well uh, mr don pepler who is the uh lay leader here at hamilton he's i said i told him he's been in my side kicking the pulpit since i arrived in june and so I'd say, I, I think it would be befitting if you would bring the message on today. And so he uh, agreed to stand in, in, my, in my place at, while I'm in the building. And that was one of the things that he said, I don't typically preach when the pastor is in the building. And so I, I wanted to reassure him that the same God that is present when I'm absent is the same God that is present while I'm here. And so I, I, I pray that you would give him your amens and you give him your hallelujahs to, to let him know that you are with him, amen? And so after the, the song, the next voice that you will hear will be none other than, well, as I call him, Mr. Dunn. Good morning, church. It's good to see you all here this morning, this beautiful Sunday morning we have with uh, great weather, less humidity. It's nice outside with that. 
You know, in thinking about being here this morning, it kind of reminded me, perhaps, of a time, perhaps if, you, if you've gone to a Broadway play, and you go in, you get seated, and you're looking at your playbill, and then there's an announcement that comes over the loudspeaker saying, the role being played by so-and-so <laughs> will now be played by this and that. Well, I guess I'm this and that <laughs> for this morning. But we'll trust that, you know, the Spirit of the Lord is still present in a mighty way in this place. The title for the message this morning is I Am to You Are. Now, this message had a genesis over a year ago. And I think uh, many of us here in the congregation will remember the study and the sermon series that Pastor Jessica uh, did. And that was basically on the book, The God We Can Know, The I Am Sayings of Jesus by Ron Fouquet. In that particular sermon series and Bible study, we learned that there are seven I am sayings by Jesus in the Gospel of John. I am the bread of life in chapter 6, verse 35. I am the light of the world, chapter 8, verse 12. I am the gate, chapter, seven, chapter 10, verse 7. I am the good shepherd, chapter 10, verse 11. I am the resurrection and the life, Chapter 11, verse 25, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Chapter 14, verse 6, and I am the true vine in chapter 15, verse 1. Now these sayings are powerful statements for us, but to really understand them, I think we have to go back further in scripture. Now, it would appear this morning that my handwriting has come back to bite me because in giving the scripture in writing it out and then emailing it uh, I wanted I suggested Exodus 3 verses 13 to 16 not Exodus 13 verses 13 to 16. So it's my, my problem. So, you know, I kind of threw the pastor a little curveball on that one with it. But that is important for us when we really want to focus on the significance of these I am sayings for us. And in Exodus 3, 13 to 16, it's a very familiar story that we know and we've heard since our Sunday school years. It's Moses and the burning bush. You know that Moses was out tending sheep in Midian, and as he was doing that, he came upon a bush that was burning, but not being consumed. And it struck him as rather odd, and so he went up to it, and at that point, a voice was heard calling him by name. Moses. That voice was the voice, the very voice of God. And God had a mission for Moses. He had an opportunity for him to serve. And when he asked Moses and told Moses what this was, you're going to go back to Egypt and you're going to take the Israelites out of Egypt and lead them to a promised land. That was a big mission. And Moses, like most of us sometimes, when we get you know, an, an asked to do a particular mission or service or uh, involved in some event, was very hesitant to immediately say, I will go. And he started coming up with various excuses. And the excuse that's relevant for us here this morning is reasonable because Moses says to the Lord, suppose I go there 
and tell them that you want me to, that I'm to bring them out of slavery and into a promised land. And they ask me, who sent me? What do I tell them? And the Lord God Almighty answers him, I am who I am, the very name of God. I am who I am. In Hebrew, that goes, that translates to Yahweh. This is important as we look then again to our scripture from John, where Jesus is using that phrase, I am. And when he has used those phrase throughout the Gospel of John, because it is affirming his deity, that he is God. And this was significant because it provided a real stumbling block for the Pharisees and Sadducees. They equated that with blasphemy. But for us, these statements lead us to who Jesus is and what he can really mean for us in our daily lives. The knowledge, this knowledge of who Jesus is, is essential, it's good. But if we're going to be faithful servants, we need to make it personal. We need to have a personal relationship with Jesus. We need to have a fellowship that leads to action with Jesus. Our relationship with Jesus is established when we accept him as our Lord and Savior. We have become God's son, God's daughter. We are a part of the family of God. Fellowship is different. Fellowship is dynamic. Fellowship is action. It requires action to have fellowship. So if we want to go from I am to you are, to you are my bread, my light, my gate, my shepherd, my resurrection, my way, truth, and life, my vine, we need to know the pathway to that. The starting point is clearly to accept Jesus as our personal savior. And Paul's words in Romans chapter 10 verse nine clearly show the way that if we confess with our mouths that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. That's salvation. But salvation is not the end point in our walk as believers. It is, a, while our salvation is secure, the tangible fruit of salvation is found in our fellowship, our interaction with Jesus. And you might ask, well, how does this become accomplished? How can we do it in our lives if it's that important? And it is. I think there are four important areas in our lives that lead clearly to fellowship with Jesus. The first is prayer, to speak often with the Lord. Prayer is a great resource we have. It connects us with the Lord. No particular form is needed. There are no special words that, that we need to say or is required. We can pray aloud or we can pray silently. We only need to speak from our heart for we have a Lord, a Savior, who will hear us. Prayer is a way that we develop our fellowship with the Lord. The second way is through scripture. We develop fellowship with Jesus when we seek to learn more about him in scripture. The more we are in the, the word, the deeper can be our fellowship with him. 
the deeper we are in the word, the more meaningful Jesus becomes in our life. We cannot ignore the teachings of scripture. The third way to really work on our fellowship with Jesus is through worship. We develop fellowship when we join with others as we are this morning in worship and praise. For this is a great, powerful, renewing resource in our daily lives to share our faith with others and to receive the assurances and the testimony of how God has worked in our lives throughout this congregation. It's good to worship with others, obviously, but we can worship even by ourselves. When we're outside to see the glory of the day, the blue sky, the sunlight, the fresh air, we can worship and give God's praise. That is crucial. The fourth way we can maintain and grow in our fellowship with Jesus is through mission. When we are in mission, we put our faith into action. We share God's love for others when we care for others. And it's something that all can do. It's not dependent upon age, gender, experience, or training. We all can be involved in mission. And that is crucial in maintaining and growing our fellowship with Jesus. Now, no one of these factors, these four factors we went through, are sufficient in and of themselves. You can't do just one. They need to be together. We need to be active in those activities. They form an action plan, a way to stay in fellowship with Jesus. And should we stray as our people, we are, you know, tend to stray, it's a way to regain fellowship with Jesus. But how is this really significant for us if we do these things? I mean, what, you know, will it really make a difference in our lives? And to explore this, I thought the best way was to look at the I am statement of Jesus, where he says, I am the good shepherd. Because this really shows how we can put this meaningful, meaningfully in our lives each and every day. The Good Shepherd is a mighty image that's used in Scripture, that Jesus used and it's been used in both the Old Testament and the New Testaments. The Scripture from John that we read this morning tells us that the Good Shepherd lays down his life for his sheep and that he knows his sheep. But there's much more to Jesus as our shepherd than this, and we have a great resource for that. And that resource is Psalm 23. This is a great Psalm of David. It gives us a more complete picture of who Jesus is for us. Psalm 23 is not just a funeral Psalm. It has great relevance to our daily walk and fellowship with Jesus. When we look closely at this psalm, as you can, that's up on the board, we can discern, I believe, five main attributes of Jesus as a good shepherd that impacts our life. The first is, Jesus is a personal shepherd. A personal shepherd. Jesus is my shepherd. We have a one-to-one -one relationship with him. Jesus is available to us. He is our 
shepherd. The second is that Jesus is a providing shepherd. He supplies our deepest needs. We will not want for that which is crucial for us. We can remember the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus gave. In Matthew 5, verses 25 through 34, he says, remember the birds of the air and the lilies of the field. God cares for them, and even more, do I care for you. Jesus cares for and about us. He provides for us. He is a source of strength. Thirdly, our fellowship is developed through, we know that God can make an impact in our life because he is a pardoning shepherd. He restores our soul. His sacrificial, substitutionary, atoning death on the cross paid our sin debt in full. We live under the grace, the very grace of God because of Jesus as our shepherd. This is great news because we need a pardoning shepherd. We need someone to continuously bring us back into his arms when we stray. Fourth, Jesus is a protecting shepherd. We don't have to fear that he's not going to be with us, that he will leave us, he is with us, and we can trust him through the toughest times. In John 14, verse 16, he says he has given us the Holy Spirit to be with us, to comfort us, to be our comforter. He did not leave his disciples. He does not leave us alone. We can trust him through the toughest time. He guards our soul. In Matthew 28, 20, in the Great Commission, says that never will Jesus leave us even unto the end of the age. And fifth, Jesus is a preparing shepherd. He has made ready a place for us where we can live with him forever. Our future with Jesus is secure. Our future with Jesus is secure. It is well with our soul. John 14, verse 2, Jesus proclaims that his father's house has many rooms. If it was not so, he would have told us. What an impact we, these aspects of Jesus as the good shepherd have on our daily life. What a great savior, what a great friend we have in Jesus. Our call today is to maintain fellowship with him through prayer, scripture, worship, ministry. We go from I am to you are. When you remember who our good shepherd is, there is no aspects of our life that he can't help and be with us and guide us through. He is our personal shepherd, our providing shepherd, our pardoning shepherd, our protecting shepherd, our preparing shepherd. May we make it so in our lives today and always. Amen. set free. Amen. Amen. I am a gospel preacher, heart on fire, freedom singing testifier, because
I've been redeemed, I am a believer. So we would love to stand up together if you are able to sing this. We're going to sing the I am's here. Back to God. And thank you, God, for being our personal shepherd, providing shepherd, pardoning shepherd, protecting shepherd, and preparing shepherd. And in response to that, we're going to sing about how we are here to love and serve the Lord. Amen. I walk a bit different now, now that my heart's been found. Nothing really comes. All right, let me see if I can sing this right. What I want to do, I'm going to change it up. What I want to do is, Shirley, can you go to the chorus first? The chorus slide first. I am up. There it is. Let's start there. some praise again for that word. Oh, you can do better than that. That, that, that would be good if that was just for me, but that was a word of confirmation on today. And as we come to this part in our worship experience, when we say that we are a believer and when we move from I am to you are, what he was sharing with us is that we're in relationship with God. And as believers who are in relationship with God, we are called to put our faith into action. And 
Tithing and offering is an act of faith. It's an opportunity to say, God, I don't know how you do what you do with what I give you, but I trust and believe that you can do more than enough. And so I know during this time there have been some changes in how we uh, give our offering and our tithe. And if you're here this morning with us in the sanctuary, there are trays at each of the, uh, the exit doors. You can feel free on your way out to drop those, your tithe and offering in the trays. Or if you've joined us online, and even if you're here in the sanctuary and you would like to give online, you can log on to our church website and follow those steps and give that way. Or if you would like to put your tithe and offering in the mail, you are more than welcome to do that as well. One of the things that God is calling us to do in this season that we call a pandemic is to put our faith into action. I, I, I used to uh, say a long time ago, like, talk is cheap. Yeah, you, you've heard somebody say that, right? Talk is cheap. Anybody can talk about something. But God is calling us to, to a season of, let me see if you really mean what you say that you say. Yeah, that, that's what this season is really about. Let, let me see if you really believe in me since you say that I'm your Lord and Savior. I'm not going to preach again, but that's what God is speaking to me to share with someone because we, it's easy to say he's Lord when we're not following him as Lord. Let us together recite our offering prayer. God of mercy, we give you praise because you are better than good. Bless these gifts of sacrifice to be used to glorify your kingdom and become agents of grace for those in need. In Jesus' name, amen. And since you're resting on your feet, you can join us in our uh, benediction song. of God that surpasses all understanding go with you. May God's face shine upon you. May you walk in courage, confessing and also living out for others that you are a believer. May you continue to move from I am to you are so that others will come to know this God that we call mighty and awesome. God, you are a way maker. God, you are a healer. God, you are more than enough. May those words flow from our lips this week as we go forth and testify. Church, go forth and be disciples of Christ so the world will come to know the light who is Jesus in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Have a blessed week, everyone. We will meet back in this place of worship, same bat channel, same bat time next week. <laughs>